So now in this video we're going to look at the uh, passive buzzer right here. This is the one that we looked at earlier without the epoxy or the plastic filling up the inside. The uh, one with the plastic on the inside was an active buzzer and you just had to apply 5 volts to it and it buzzed. This one we need to give it a, a signal. So hopefully you can hear that clicking right there. And uh, we got the 555 timer here. I can adjust the speed that the output changes. And you can see it goes faster. And now it's buzzing. The LED, you can probably see, looks like it's almost uh, completely on, but it was actually turning on and off rapidly. So to speed this up, I'm gonna swap out the capacitors. So this is now the timing capacitor. It was the coupling capacitor. You can see the LED is already uh, flashing faster. We need to put the uh, negative side of the capacitor to the passive buzzer because that is headed towards ground right there. So I'll go up three rows right there. And you can see that it's clicking uh, faster even though the trim pot is all the way up right now. And uh, when I turn down, you can see that we get a high pitch right there. By the way, this capacitor down here is just to the uh, supply rails and that's to help hold the uh, voltage at uh, five volts right there. So I just grabbed a fairly large value right there because these 555 timer uh, circuits, you never know if they'll become unstable when you got something that can draw a high amount of current. But it looks like we're getting away just fine without the capacitor there but it's a good idea to still put it there on the supply rail. So now we're going to look at this on the uh, schematic, but first we'll look at it in uh, real life here. So we have to power the 555 timer. Positive pin goes to uh, pin 8 right there, VCC, and then the uh, negative supply right there goes uh, to uh, ground, which is the uh, top left pin, and uh, this jumper is kind of hiding it right now, but there it is up there. We have, for the uh, timing, this uh, 220 ohm resistor, we're working with 5 volts. That's as low as I want to go in uh, resistance. And uh, so that's coming over to uh, pin 7 up here, which is the discharge pin. But uh, it also goes to the wiper of the trim pot right there. Right now the wiper is set there. So we got all this resistance coming over here to this other jumper underneath uh, right there. I'll uh, pop that up so you can see them. And uh, so... Right now, it's going all the way. If I turn it like this, now the wiper is directly over there. That's when we had the least amount of resistance and the output was going high and low the fastest. Now that comes over to the capacitor right there. And uh, the capacitor is at the threshold pin. This is the one that monitors the voltage of the capacitor when it gets up to two thirds of the supply voltage. And these are polarized. That side has to go to the no, more negative side of the circuit. This is a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. That's a 47 farad, uh, microfarad uh, capacitor, just to make the math easy. So threshold pin is waiting for it to get to two thirds of the supply voltage. Trigger pin over here, they're connected directly together. Pin two is waiting for one third of the supply voltage. When we have the output high, the capacitor charges two thirds, then we get the discharge there until it gets down to one third. So discharge connects to ground until we get down to a one third, the capacitor discharges, and then the output goes high again and the capacitor starts charging. The discharge pin disconnects so that current cannot flow again for the capacitor to charge. So we covered that before, so I'm not going to go into more detail on that. Now, we have the LED here. It doesn't do anything for the passive buzzer here. It's just a visual right there. Doesn't affect it at all as long as you don't drain away too much current, which doesn't seem to be a problem with the uh, capacitors we're using. Larger value capacitors take longer to charge and uh, so you may lose enough current where it throws things off a little bit. But in uh, any case, we have uh, the capacitor from the output. That is pin three where the resistor also is. Remember, you gotta put the LED in the right way. Long lead the anode towards more positive, short lead the cathode towards more negative. Now, current actually alternates uh, direction in this capacitor. First it charges, that be side becomes more positive, that side more negative, 
and then when the output goes low it uh, discharges and uh, so basically it goes to ground which the other side of the capacitor is to ground with just the uh, passive buzzer along the way so in any case current is changing direction through both the capacitor and through the uh, buzzer here and uh, so that is how the passive buzzer makes its uh, sound it's clicking or it's buzzing depending on how fast it's going one more thing before I forget we have the reset pin right here it's waiting for a low uh, input there basically connected to ground or close to ground I think less than half of the supply voltage we don't want it to do anything so we put it directly to the positive side of the supply voltage and then it does nothing and now we come to the diagram we're using a dual inline package as we saw on the board there's the uh, pin layout pretty straightforward you start at the uh, top left one work your way around uh, go on up so there's eight pins and uh, we covered this before so I'm just going to quickly go through this I think I'm using the NE555 but probably any 555 will work exactly the same for this particular circuit and uh, there are the uh, pin names again if you want to see those and here is the schematic so main thing is we got it in a stable mode right there we are powering it we already went over this so I'm going to go over it uh, quickly pin 8 and pin 1 that provides the power for the internal circuitry and for the output when it goes high and low when it goes low it connects uh, pretty close to ground almost uh, perfectly and as close as it can to the positive supply probably closer to three and a half volts or something maybe four uh, pin four there as I said before is the reset pin we don't want it to do anything we go to the positive supply if we went to the negative supply it would set the output low and hold it low uh, permanently so we don't want it to do anything now the uh, timing is to the left even though as we saw before the pins were to the right because when it comes to schematics usually inputs are to the left and outputs are towards the right that's just the uh, flow also uh, top to bottom but uh, in any case since we're using 5 volts uh, 220 ohms is the minimum resistance I'm using you would need more resistance for higher uh, voltages we're not going to go over that uh, too much so in any case we go through that resistor when the wiper was all the way up to uh, the discharge pin which isn't do anything, doing anything when the capacitor charges then current's going to flow through the capacitor it's going to charge up pretty quickly gets to two thirds of the supply voltage and then it will discharge instantly basically through uh, pin 7 and the output will go low so while it's charging outputs high and then while it's discharging output is low the uh, trim pot here if we go higher in resistance and if you use a larger value trim pot you'll have more resistance and when you add resistance it'll slow down the output even more lower value trim pot won't have as much resistance for a given spot and the output will go high and low uh, faster than uh, the 10 kilo ohm. but that uh, we use 10 kilo ohm. so in any case we add uh, resistance there and then that makes it take longer to charge and also longer to uh, discharge and uh, so that's how we adjusted the timing the uh, resistance and the uh, timing capacitance right there this capacitance didn't uh, matter as much at some point if you have enough capacitance the uh, buzzer is going to stop making noise while current is still flowing and uh, so lower value it'll probably uh, kind of cut off the uh, amount of time it uh, clicks so it'll, it'll change the sound a bit so we may look at that later I did a little experimenting before this video but uh, didn't really come up with anything too exciting maybe a later video I will but in any case the uh, capacitor it uh, does something different than what we got here when the outputs high then the uh, current goes through the resistor and the LED the LED lights up as long as it's forward biased and a more positive short lead uh, cathode more negative when the output goes low you got uh, ground on both sides nothing happens no current flow or anything the capacitor when the output's high it charges and uh, the buzzer clicks until the capacitor charges up to the output uh, voltage then it stops current stops flowing that's what capacitors do they let uh, alternating current go through them and they block direct current so as long as the output stays high once the capacitor is charged no current flow and then the output goes low we got that side more positive that side more negative it connects that uh, to ground and we got that current path right there so the capacitor discharges through the buzzer and it clicks again and uh, the process just keeps repeating itself right there so in any case hopefully that made sense and uh, you enjoyed the video make sure you check out one of the other ones that I'm posting in the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video